Good morning and welcome to our service of remembrance at St Nicholas Church this morning. We have recorded ahead of time knowing that because of the pandemic we are in lockdown today so we are encouraging people to stay safe and to remember at home. In preparing for today's service there have been a lot of people who have helped to make sure that we could be uh, streaming online and indeed uh, being broadcast on Nova FM so there are a few people I want to thank. First of all Anne Whitfield, every year you help to prepare this so thank you so much uh, to Anne Whitfield and to the Newport branch of the uh, Royal British Legion. Thank you to Nova FM who are broadcasting today, particularly Harvey Williamson and Dale Talbot for your help and support. Newport Town Council, our Mayor Peter Scott and Sheila Atkinson, thank you. The, Her Majesty's Deputy Lieutenant of Shropshire, John Crackett, thank you for coming to join us. And from St Nicholas Church, our Church Warden Eddie Lowendahl, and Deputy Church Wardens uh, Elaine Berber and uh, John Armstrong and our organist for today Mike Hallam, thank you so much. Uh, we have the wonderful Colin Cox helping us with our outdoor uh, acoustics, helping us to be able to hear what's happening uh, when we're out at the War Memorial in today's service. And thank you to the whole team who've helped to uh, put today together. Um, I'm sure I'll miss a couple of names, but thank you, Alan Lloyd, Kevin Burton, Melissa Dewsbury, Nick Gee, Tim Armstrong and Richard Law. It is really wonderful that we can come together to remember. At difficult times, it is so encouraging to know that our country has gone through worse and we have come together to overcome. It is really important for us to be thankful today to all of those who have laid down their lives for us and those who continue to risk their life for our benefit, for our safety, our security and for our liberties. So let's come together and let's remember them. Good morning and welcome. As we gather, mostly online, uh, but also a few of us uh, are gathering on, on Tuesday before Remembrance Day, so that we can uh, gather together in the safety of our homes to remember this special and important day. A day where we remember all of those who over time, but particularly in the First and Second World Wars, have given their lives so that we might have freedom. And as we gather today, we remember them. In times of difficulty, as this pandemic is proving to be, we need to remember that when we come together, we can overcome any difficulty. We begin with our first hymn, which is Eternal Father, Strong to Save. <laughs>
Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of mankind.
true love of peace, and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are now going to have our second hymn, which is, O oh Jesus, I have promised. <laughs>
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We remain seated or kneeling for our prayers of intercession. Let us pay, pray for the peace of the world. We pray for representatives and rulers that they may have wisdom to know and courage to do what is right. Lord, we pray for all who work to improve international relationships that they may find a true way to reconcile people of different races, colour and creed. And Lord, we pray for men and women the world over, that they may have justice and freedom, and live in security and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Most gracious God and Father, in whose will is our peace. Turn our hearts and the hearts of all people to yourself, that by the power of your Spirit, the peace which is founded in righteousness may be established throughout the whole world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of war, for the injured and the disabled, for the mentally distressed, and for those whose faith in God and mankind has been weakened or destroyed. Lord, we pray for homeless and refugees, for those who are hungry, and for all who have lost their livelihood and security. And Lord, we pray for all who mourn their debt, those who have lost husband or wife, children or parents, and especially for those who have no hope in Christ to sustain them in their grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Lord, at this time, we particularly pray for all of those who are feeling isolated, lonely and vulnerable. And we ask, Lord, that you would bring others close to them. Remind us each of those we need to support and help us to come together as a community, a community of love. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We now welcome Bernard Peter Scott to bring our reading. What then shall we say in response to these things? Is God for us? If he is, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all, us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord.
And so we come to our address. We gather, don't we, at a time where the COVID-19 pandemic has given us a sharp reminder of the freedoms which can be so easily taken for granted. We have mourned, haven't we, in the last year, our loss of liberty to behave as we wish. We have grieved the loss of physical contact among friends and family. We have been pushed financially. Opportunities for small businesses, even for education and healthcare for all, and our community activities have all been limited to some extent. As we gather online today for Remembrance Sunday, we can be even more grateful this year for all of the gifts and benefits, all of the possibilities which we have despite COVID in Britain today. Opportunities and possibilities because of brave people who uphold our liberty. Those who have fought for our country in the world wars and those who have done so since and before then. Those in our armed forces today. Today we need to recognise how we have benefited from the selfish act, selfless action and self-giving love of so many. As we meet today, we also need to remember other people helping in our world at this difficult time. Organisations who have selflessly and graciously given without counting the cost this year. We think with gratitude of those serving in the forces, away from loved ones in the face of the pandemic. Our emergency services continuing to save lives and support our communities under incredible pressures. Of course, we need to recognise the work of our NHS, our care homes, and all those uh, buying provisions or picking up prescriptions for those who are vulnerable those who have organised teams, and those who have volunteered themselves. We need to remember a lot of things today. And we need to remember whatever the pain and fear of those who have lost loved ones to this awful virus, and those who have been separated from loved ones in their last days on earth because of it we can be reminded that we are a country with a proud history. In a history in which brave men and women have fought and continue to fight for our freedom. We must take hope. No matter how difficult this pandemic is, we will overcome. No matter our personal difficulties, if we pull together, we can know that we have a heritage of succeeding in the face of danger, death and fear. Our wonderful Bible reading today asks what will be our response to the difficulties of our world? And in this church this morning, how do we respond to the difficulties of our time? I would suggest that we respond with gratitude. Gratitude for those who fought and died for our liberty, and those who are still doing so today. We respond by knowing that together we can overcome. And for me, most hopeful of all is that no matter what is happening, how difficult life may seem, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. No matter what is happening in our world, we can trust in his lasting love and comfort. And when we are struggling, when the darkness threatens to overcome us, and we are feeling down, we can have hope that our loving God will not let anything get between us 
We need to remember. And that memory can give us hope for the future and can give us guts to get through the difficult times we live in now. I invite you now to join me in our act of commitment. So please do stand. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of all nations. We say together, Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves today to serve you and all mankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit, give us wisdom, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Please do sit or kneel as we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
departed rest. To the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all mankind, peace and concord. And to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us for all eternity. This year marks the 75th anniversary of the end of the World War II. There are 24 names on this our war memorial from the Second World War, plus six more whose names do not appear. When it was commissioned, these men were known to their families and friends, but to us many years on they are now just names. 75 years ago, Distinguished servicemen, 
built on 12 days of the course and the course name was not appearing. I remember one spell for the moment we were down, but the night was ours. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We now come to the part of the ceremony where we are laying the wreaths. Her Majesty's Deputy Lieutenant for Shropshire. Mayor of Newport Town, Peter Scott. Representing Town Council, Sheila Atkinson. Presenting Royal British Legion, Tim Armstrong. And representing Royal British Legion, Women's Section, Lorraine Norton. Chamber of Commerce, Patrick Beach.
Peter Brook. Wrong lady. When you go home, tell them of us and say, For your tomorrow we gave our today. Happy and glorious.